execution and uh, we said that whatever we have planned in our portfolio management plan we are now putting it to action we are executing those things but execution means that only what is in the plan only that can be done if you want to uh, you know do something different from the plan then that plan has to be amended accordingly first you will only execute what is in the plan you can't do things which are not as such there in the plan so that normally you know in project management or in program management we send a change request in monitoring and control for amendment and then that thing is you know updated into the plan and then execution starts following it um, it's almost the same it's almost the same philosophy execution will do only what is written in the portfolio management plan and nothing else so they will lead the component they will uh, actively manage and resolve the risk and issues facilitate the portfolio and its component communication reprioritize and change subsidiary portfolios as per the plan that is a monitoring and control um, and man remember monitoring and control in this case in the portfolio is at the heart of it initiation planning optim um, initiation planning execution and optimization uh, that is uh, the cycle which is running and in the heart of it we are doing the monitoring and control although uh, uh, all the same five process groups like you know in the project management are there but uh, put, um, uh, monitoring and control is static it is not part of the life cycle it is static it is um, the monitoring and control is happening for all of them for any session planning execution and more and uh, optimization and second uh, second difference is that this uh, because uh, there is no closing so this is a continuously running cycle uh, okay portfolio execution is performed through its various components naturally uh, whatever are the objectives of the portfolios portfolio are fulfilled uh, when the components like the programs and projects and operations uh, which are the components of the portfolio they happen right so execution is um, giving the responsibility further to the component and then start watching them start monitoring them and whatever the expected benefits or strategic alignments would be coming from there they will be analyzed by the portfolio and monitoring and control will check that health of the portfolio is reported through regular status reports and by reviewing the component performance metric you see there are performance metrics which we established already in our plan and now those component performance metrics are just like thermometers you insert those thermometers into those component and take the temperature of of each component what are they doing how well are they aligned with the strategy and things to that effect and if there are any corrections to be made if the uh, you know whatever you have jotted down in the portfolio management plan that needs certain changes those proposed changes are reviewed by the board you can't make those changes all by yourself the board the governance board or whatever you want to call it the portfolio steering committee or whatever you want to call it they are actually going to be presented with those change requests uh, on the ongoing organizational needs changes in the organization environment may necessitate reprioritization of component maybe you know just like uh, we were talking about an example a uh, new regulation has come and that may have affected everything in our organization so our portfolio will have to be uh, reprioritized all the component may have to be reprioritized according to the new situation or maybe uh, you have to introduce a new component to fulfill the requirements of that specific change these new components are reviewed as required based on the unplanned critical needs which could be internal or external or any positive outcomes a proof of concept pilot or feasibility then we come over to the optimization that is the cycle where you know 
everything has been done, corrected, and now we are reaping the, the fruits, the result of what we have done. So we optimize, we see what we have achieved and how we can further improve it, right? So this is very closely associated with the optimization and it is going to affect the uh, strategy of the portfolio, the alignment of the portfolio. When we re-evaluate uh, periodically, this optimization is going to help us a lot. Optimization is the process of making a portfolio as effective as possible. You know, uh, it is like a continuous improvement going on by maximizing available conditions, constraints and resources. We have seen what are the risks, what are the problems in the portfolio. We keep correcting those and ultimately optimizing our portfolio. Typically, the primary goal of portfolio optimization is to ensure that the available human material and financial resources are best applied. You know, best utilization of available resources, the most appropriate resource, uh, you know, utilization of available resources. Although some organizations schedule regular optimization sessions, which is a good thing, you know, don't wait for the results to occur, but you should, uh, if you can somehow do this regular optimization thing, maybe on a periodic basis, on a monthly basis, on a fortnightly basis, whatever, that could even be, even be better. Rather than waiting for results from various components and then tweaking the thing, we can also do the regular optimization session. I have a question. And that would be, um, yes, please. If you can go back to that uh, life cycle slide, this, the life cycle slide. Is it all right? Uh, the chart, the, 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 the chart that had the uh, life cycle, portfolio life cycle on the component level and the portfolio level. Uh, okay. This one? Yeah, yeah. So there's two there's two things in both execution and optimization. So it's they're side by side. It's a demand and resource capacity planning adjustments. It's mm -hmm. it's it's in both areas. So as I as as I as I said before, I get confused, or not that I get confused, I, I have to make sure I clearly understand which section I'm in to understand. You know, okay. the questions. This is this is this is the same wording in both sections. So that's that's intentionally meant to throw me off. Let, let me let me tell you. During execution, remember, no matter it is a project or a program or a portfolio, you are just doing what you have you have been given in the plan. Right? So you are running a portfolio, a component has been completed, it has been transitioned, it has been, you know, handed over, the results have been achieved. So at that stage, the expected optimization would have happened when the transition was done. But when it comes to improving the optimization further, that is the subject of, of optimization uh, cycle. Re-optimization of portfolio, overall portfolio, how can we further in, enhance and improve it. That is re-optimization. But the optimization given in execution is what was planned already. We are not, uh, we are just evaluating here the level of optimization which had to be achieved. Has it been achieved or not? That is all what you are doing in execution. You are not further re-optimizing it, right? This is the difference. Yes. Man, all right. I wish they would have worded that different, <laughs> but I understand it. Yes. So uh, uh, execution is just following the plan. Optimization is doing more than that. And I, I would say optimization is something which brings changes to the plan and updates it accordingly. In the next cycle, whatever right. optimizations you have done, they will become part of the plan and they will then be executed and they will be achieved ahead. Yes, that is the key. Yeah, for me, for me, that's the key. It's, it's, it's an output of the optimization to update the plan. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Moving on, 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 and on to optimization. Uh, 
uh, okay, during this uh, uh, while lesson is under review, those components is not a part of the project. We read that. Uh, okay, moving on to the monitoring and control. Now, monitoring and control is keeping you know an eye on everything on the whole cycle, in from uh, initiation, planning, execution, and optimization. Monitoring and control is sitting in a control room right in the middle. Whatever is happening, they are they are watching it. They are actually watching the performance metrics. They are collecting the reports. They are, you know, kind of uh, creating the change changes to the plan. Uh, and, you know, whatever optimization is doing, whatever execution is doing, this is recording uh, whatever uh, the uh, metrics, uh, the uh, performances are, and accordingly changes and updates the portfolio management plan. So monitor and control is one of the critical supportive activity. It is not the part of the cycle as such, but it is a that critical was going to be my question. Activity. Yes, please. That exactly was what my question was. It's not part of the cycle, but it's just it's just ongoing. Yeah, it is ongoing. It is ongoing. And but, because it is but not technically cycle, it's only done during execution and technically it's only done during execution. Uh, no, but this is not uh, this monitoring and control is happening uh, while everything is happening. The whole cycle is running. When it was initiating, it was uh, recording the you know what are the key performance indicators and all that is noting down and watching it. So this is a watchdog kind of a thing. I would say uh, it performs the role of a management office. You can call it a portfolio management office. So monitoring and control is that kind of body. Sitting right in the middle. Purpose is to understand when changes need to be made to the portfolio or to the portfolio management processes, meaning amendments to the management plan, portfolio management plan, right? This process includes execution, documentation, communication, of the decision and resulting action. So all whatever you have written in the communication, uh, sorry, portfolio management plan, the overall communication is the responsibility. Overall risk management and all that is is the uh, the watchdog is monitoring and control. They are recording everything, and they are analyzing everything, and they are suggesting changes to the portfolio. And ultimately, this is how the monitoring and control works. Right. So far, so good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to spend some more time on that one. So you're mon you're monitoring and controlling initiation. That means that you're just trying to make sure that the the, the tasks are being done. Is that what monitoring and controlling means there? monitoring and control while the initiation is happening they are recording what is happening how the performance metrics are being established they are noting it down uh, they are uh, putting it on the watch list and then when we start uh, planning they again they are watching and then when we uh, get into the execution uh, how the things are performing how those specific key performance indicators are being monitored and all that that, that comes under the monitoring and control and optimization. You see, this is a this is a watchdog who is alive, awake all the time, right? But if you ask me, the most of its uh, you know results of its performance will start coming out in optimization, uh, execution after execution, and during the optimization. Okay, okay. I'm, 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 I'm comparing that to project management. Or oh, but very different from there. Happen very different. In, yeah, in project management, monitor controlling can only happen in execution. But here, yeah, yeah. It's, it, not like it, it's monitoring and controlling the process of portfolio management. Yep, exactly. Okay. So this is slightly different from uh, what the concept of in project management was. Okay, moving on to the key principles. Key principles of portfolio management. Uh, you see. Yeah, uh, we have extracted it from the life cycle itself. You see, 
uh, monitoring and control we have just talked continuous monitoring and updation is required uh, we have a very dynamic nature as far as uh, the portfolio life cycle is concerned it keeps changing it keeps you know we have to uh, keep an eye when and how it is to change and how uh, the whole uh, management plan can be rehashed according to that there are stages to the life cycle which we just discussed right and then adaptation to change quick adaptation to change if the strategy of the organization changes or any other regulation by the government changes or you know new regulation comes in we have to quickly adapt to that and then we have got a long term perspective we are kind of uh, uh, portfolio is a big thing it is never ending kind of a thing and uh, naturally we are uh, uh, having our sights fixed in long term so objectives of the portfolio are really uh, in a, in a longer time span okay moving on uh, we next major heading is portfolio management information system now uh, what do you understand you might uh, have uh, studied um, a topic which was called project management information system and now what we are talking about is a portfolio management information system that clearly assumes that there might have been a, a program management information system what is this information system what is your view about a uh, PMIS. The question is, what is it? Yes, I'm asking you that. Um, what do you remember out of the project management information? Center? What was it? Uh, this could be dashboards, it could be uh, charts, or mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Gantt charts, right? Things like things of that nature. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from, uh, I'm talking from the project perspective. You had, yeah. again, I will just remind you before the project was established, there was a project governance structure established under whatever the higher level governance was. And based on that governance structure, the project governance framework or the project governance plan, which was not created by the project manager. You, as a project manager, created a project management plan exactly in accordance with those governance guidelines. Got it? Yes. Now, those governance guidelines are instrumental in establishing what tools can you use, what techniques can you use, what procedures, what policies. So all that is, is, is available with you in your uh, library, right? You know, like you, we call it organizational process assets, all the policies and procedures uh, required are in the archive. And this project management plan you created that uh, asks you to follow them, right? Now, what is project management information system? Project management information system is an automated system. It could be a computer program, like you said, that which could result in a dashboard or maybe a list or something, whatever. So this is an automation program which makes those rules and regulations and policies and whatever available to you with a click of a, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a, within a few seconds. And not only that, it also keeps you updated with the progress of whatever is happening in the project. Now translate the whole story into a portfolio now. The portfolio is a bigger picture. A portfolio management information system will not only be talking about a single project, it would be the performance, performances collected for the whole thing, whole big show. So exactly the story is the same. There, ha there is a portfolio governance framework. There is a go portfolio governance plan created based on which the portfolio manager created the portfolio management plan. Uh, there are all the rules and uh, regulations and whatever the policies and procedures are, which are included in the governance, the details of those are available in the organizational process assets, right? And your portfolio management information system should be able to access all those 
governance frameworks and everything and can, we should also be able to keep a record of monitoring and control whatever is happening within the portfolio what all components are doing what the performance metrics are and ultimately convert into a portfolio level dashboard as you said portfolio level uh, picture a snapshot of your portfolio at any point in time naturally that is called a dashboard but that actually uh, has a lot of uh, you know help from the database from the organizational process assets the digital data available and with monitoring and control is providing the current uh, progress and performance metrics and all so all of this put together it forms your project management information system i'm not sure where, uh, what what would be in a a chart or a dashboard, and this kind of gets to my question before, to where the, the portfolio is not the sum of the components. So this dashboard is not necessarily showing cost or schedule. So, no, no, no. you know, I, I, I get back to the subjective word, it's because the, portfolio, the, the goal is to get strategic alignment and ensure that the components and everything are achieving that. So that's more of a, a word. It's more of a word I'm trying to think what you would be looking at as a snapshot uh -huh. to show alignment. It's it's the portfolio itself. It's a review of the components, but mm -hmm. it's not really a standard dashboard per se that's got charts on it. It's it's because you know, it's a it's a. We don't need to have the cost uh, as we did in the in the project. Are our program, but here we are. We are more concerned about the value, right? Yes, there kind there could be cause that you know cost of portfolio is rising. The benefits of the portfolio are not uh, equivalent to that, so we may need to change the line. I mean, it's, it's an input, right? Yeah. So that kind of thing. But you see, whenever you say dashboard, it doesn't mean that there is a standard dashboard. For portfolio, the dashboard shape of the dashboard will be redesigned accordingly, according to the need of the portfolio manager. And naturally, yes. a dashboard could have various, uh, you know, um, optics that could be different for a portfolio manager. That could be different for maybe a sponsor. It could be different for a stakeholder. So whatever level of information is required and required to be provided to that specific person, uh, his dashboard will be customized according to that. So at the portfolio level- But it's more level, descriptive. It's more descriptive than a standard. Descriptive, or you can say, uh, I don't want to call it descriptive because this is just a snapshot. It could be a picture, it could be a diagram or a graph, or maybe some data here and there. Okay, all right, that makes sense. But naturally, if you click on uh, something and you, that can um, come out as a detail as well, I'm not saying that that detail is not available. Yeah, but I understand it's like a diagram that shows what, you know, it, it, it's a visual of what the yeah. portfolio manager understands as alignment. So you could have the different categories and you, exactly. it, it's, it's a visual exactly. to say, in my opinion, <laughs> Uh, or whatever I would say in my opinion I think we're here and here and here so it is it can be a dashboard as far as visual it's just I, I understand yeah the dashboard could be for any purpose even for operational purposes we have dashboard dashboard is a general concept yeah. it is not a project it's, management concept right okay thank you right so uh, after having had this discussion probably all of this becomes uh, very easy to understand portfolio management information system consists of such tools and techniques which are used to gather, integrate, visualize, preserve, and disseminate the outputs of organizational project portfolio management. So organizational portfolio management, in short, let's call it a portfolio, portfolio management, how, uh, how we came to the conclusion, how did we, uh, what were the parameters on which we established, what are the objectives, and maybe, you know, in financial terms, we say, okay, this objective is giving us the value worth this much. So the overall value of the of the portfolio and uh, uh, overall expenses on the portfolio, yes, of course, 
these could also be shown on your dashboard. It is used to support all aspects of portfolio management and may be integrated with a business management tool. Normally in organizations, we have got some kind of a business management tool, which we call the management information system and portfolio management information system could be a part of that. Now it may not be a separate software altogether. Maybe the whole PA project management information system, program management information system, portfolio management information is basically part of a larger business management tool, which is already existing in your uh, organizational software. The organization's enterprise resource planning system could be a, that software. The business process management system could be there. Tools to measure and optimize the process, business processes, process modeling tools. All of this could be part of, of a larger business management tool. Um, well, uh, generally when we talk today, we talk about and something automated computer program or something like that. But if uh, uh, there, there, uh, you are somewhere where no automation is available, um, a manual system could also be called as a portfolio management information system. Maybe you have worked in a manual environment where there are no computers and still you were doing all this job manually, maybe through making charts and diagrams and things and presenting it to your bosses. So it can even be done manually. It is not only uh, reliant on the automatic automated tools. These systems support overall organizational visibility. Naturally, anybody in the organization can look at that that uh, dashboard and uh, quickly know what where we stand. Complete visibility, uh, standardization, measurement. The current results are there, and you can see the measurement. You can see the result, and they are um, accurate. And process improvement, and can facilitate effective decision making by providing executive management with key performance metrics and target collection analysis and reporting. Well, that is as far as the PMIS is concerned. Little more, you know, a lot of material is written there in your book and you can read through that. But generally speaking, is a it is a powerful tool, especially when it is used for portfolio purposes, portfolio governance. To ensure portfolio governance, PMIS is a watchdog because it provides transparency. Everybody, you know, transparency is very critical, is very important. We don't need to hide things. We need to be completely transparent. Whatever we, we are doing, all the stakeholders should be knowing what is happening. We don't hide uh, information partially from one stakeholder from the other. And it clarifies that who is responsible, who is accountable for what in within the portfolio. So everybody is completely uh, aware what is happening. Then, as we discussed, these are, could be automated tools. Some organizations have a project portfolio management application, PPM. Well, that is one and the same thing. Whether you call it a PPM, you call it a PMIS, you, or you call it a uh, what, what is it, resource management thing or whatever you want to call it. Uh, whether it is a part of the larger business tool, whatever. So PMIS is sometimes a collection of spreadsheet at a lower level when we, it is not a very intelligent system. You, it can refer you to various spreadsheet, but naturally the idea what we were discussing was more of a dashboard, which is the most intelligent way of presenting information to the relevant stakeholder. Whomsoever is accessing the PMIS, um, according to the excess of that person, according to the le uh, level and uh, um, authority of that person, that person can be revealed uh, more detailed or less detailed information. Maybe uh, the boss of the organization may be requiring only summarized information. He doesn't need to go into the spreadsheet, so he won't be shown any spreadsheet. That is the advantage of creating customized dashboard. An effective PMIS enables the portfolio manager to define, analyze, design, produce, collect, and integrate necessary data elements to manage and support a successful portfolio. Well, you know, these uh, things could be much more clear when you read them twice or thrice. There are a lot many 
you know, knowledge has been packaged into one single sentence. Define, analyze, design, produce, collect, integrate. So naturally, you have to read it again and try to imagine how how it is defined, how it is analyzed, designed, and all that. I leave that to you to contemplate, uh, read through these things in more detail, and maybe if you have some uh, some queries or doubts, you can come up with them later, and I can answer them. It provides an integrated system solution for reporting all project-based work and maybe interconnected with the larger management information system of the organization. So MIS of the organization, uh, so this could be hooked into your portfolio management information system could be hooked into that. Or maybe, maybe as we said earlier, it is part of a larger business planning tool and business management tool. Right? So that's how the portfolio can work. Uh, PMIS tools and processes could be uh, a portfolio categorization system where the components and their dependencies, ownership and all that can be, you know, I'm not saying that everybody should be presented with this data, uh, only those relevant stakeholders who need to see the pro uh, portfolio categorization may be shown uh, this view of the portfolio of the of the dashboard centralized dashboard for executive reporting and management decision making for decision making they need to know how much uh, in alignment with our strategic goals we are right now so based on that they may they may be making certain decisions they not do not need to see more details that is unnecessary for them software automation uh, tools to replace manual processes maybe you have got as we, we said we have we have access to the spreadsheets pdf files so maybe my whole manuals could be made available but naturally not for the bosses it is only for those who are uh, who need those manuals to be accessed so it could be electronic system where uh, we have a paperless environment centralized online document repository and version control i'm i'm not at all saying that all of this what is written here all uh, is to be accessed by any one single entity or person. Not at all. But there are needs of different stakeholders and they all need to see the things in a different way. The people who are involved with the uh, with the working of the portfolio may have to access the document repositories and reports and spreadsheets and all. Bosses do not need, need that. They just need a, a simple, uh, you know, kind of an indicator uh, as if it can be helpful in making their decision. So we do not provide the level of detail to everyone, uh, but it all depends upon uh, who is asking for it. We are not hiding anything. We are just giving the necessary data to the relevant stakeholder. Workflow management documentation of escalation communication, historical and current information on risks, issues, assumptions, etc. Integration. Sorry. Integration with other applications, if there are any business process management tools or other, how are you linked with that? How are you linked with the financial management process and system? Uh, naturally, risk databases and associated analysis tools could be integrated or maybe hooked into uh, uh, this and issue databases also. You know, they, all these databases are electronic in nature, even the documentation, manuals, and all that. So they could be provided access through this tool. Communication man management processes and tools, business process management tools. So uh, when we say the word dashboard, that doesn't mean um, one uh, view. That could have hundreds of views, and those could be available to different stakeholders. Should be noted that integration among all management tools plays an important part towards the validated consolidated communication of information and knowledge basically pmis is a information or communication information distribution tool this is a communication tool in other words so let us look at it which it should be covered in our communication management plan as well pmis needs to be a comprehensive documented dynamic set of policies and products process and what is that dynamic set of policies and processes that is the the portfolio governance is behind it portfolio governance is behind it 
it represents the portfolio governance and the detailed policies and procedures are in the organizational process asset they are also online available and are part of pmi so pmi is governed by them when properly implemented pmi provides direction and integrates information from individual project program management system because the monitor and control is sending the current information about whatever is happening from the portfolio point of view in the various component so those in that information also can be integrated into your pmis use of an effective pmis provides a way to routinely analyze and quantify the value so at any one time there could be an indicator which is showing that whatever has happened so far in the organization the current worth of the organization or the current portfolio value is like this much maybe on a sliding scale from 1 to 10 uh, you can say right now we are standing at 8 and maybe next day you see that it has been reduced to 7 so you say okay why why we are uh, our portfolio value is going down and then you will be shown those red marks or red areas due to which the portfolio value is con constantly decreasing or increasing so it like it could be shown like a uh, like a speedometer a speedometer kind of a thing this is all part of the dashboard right the, the way you you make uh, the visualization for that okay specifically pmis allows portfolio managers to answer questions and what are these questions which portfolio components will best support the organization business strategy and goals naturally uh, whatever has been recorded by the monitoring and controlled and you know whatever had the had we planned and the comparison of that and the performance uh, metrics analysis ultimately that should yield into these kinds of information is there a program or a project that provide the anticipated business result as demonstrated by the portfolio metric so all those initiatives all those component who are exactly performing out according to that they will be maybe they could be shown as green and those who are falling behind they may be amber and who, those who have been uh, in the danger zone they may be shown as red so there could be many ways of representing that visually does each portfolio component have appropriate resources so maybe it can show that which are the components which are in the red zone as far as the resources are concerned and which kind of resources are lacking and that kind of thing that can also be shown diagrammatically does the pmis reflect the real overall status of the portfolio as i said there could be um, on a scale of 1 to 10 or maybe on on the any other scale which represents the uh, portfolio value at any one point in time so um, i don't say that there is one specific software you can use but i i, I would rather say it should be a customized software for uh, for your organization a comprehensive pmi should support processes that adding uh, that address continue continuing performance challenges for ongoing portfolio that is one of the reasons why we need a highly customizable kind of a software or uh, you know application for that so in journal the key features of your pmi should be that it should be able to collect data and analyze it it should be able to provide a decision support as if uh, the viewer can make their own decisions and uh, based on that uh, reporting would be there communication is, is is definitely a tool for communication uh, it has got other tools of analysis also available to it resource management and i would like from today's perspective i would say ai could be a very uh, you know good addition to the key features of pmis ai can you know help us in all of these features if the artificial intelligence uh, like you know we, that is available nowadays um, in ch chat gpts and all that could be wonderful addition to your pmis and in a lot many things we have seen that chat gpt and ai has been Uh, has been inducted has been inducted in many things the pmi is also experimenting with things where pmis uh, where uh, chat gpt and ai can help uh, for project program and portfolio management 
anyways moving on uh, to the governance and probably i have explained governance in such a detail uh, that you need not you know if you can just read through this you will find whatever i have said that is exactly what it is yeah. developing okay, so. that portfolio governance framework that is where when the governance was being translated into portfolio governance that is the portfolio governance framework and that was the basis for your portfolio management plan right so here in this slide we are concentrating on portfolio governance it can be one of the most important decision that an organization makes and uh, what are the factors here i just uh, go through some of them types of component within the portfolio and the required number of subsidiary portfolio you know this could be governed by the governance framework it should tell us that we cannot handle more than 10 maybe maybe 10 components or maybe not more than 10 programs and not more than 100 por- projects at a time this is the capacity of our portfolio yes these kind of information could also be part of your governance legal or regulatory program and project which typically need form governance level of administration you know what level of uh, administration what permissions are allowed how communications are to be done uh, how agility how much agility is required to adopt the portfolio because it is highly flexible highly adaptable so naturally there is it is a sense of agility in it how can we apply agility now this is also one of the leading um, Uh, you know uh, research subjects nowadays that is agility at the organizational business and even portfolio level centralized versus decentralized governance framework location of governance and resources audits consisting of reg- regular reviews performance metrics especially related to financial non financial and portfolio focused matters so just read through these the there is nothing which is uh, kind of uh, what we have not discussed already um, you will find further the same matter further explained in these slides and i have highlighted the first point talks about the level of complexity then developing a portfolio framework governance framework as early as possible in the portfolio life cycle and as early is even before the initiation even before the initiation before the authorization of the project before the charter for the portfolio is created governance framework must be in place as if the portfolio manager when uh, takes on the responsibility must be able to consult that governance framework or the governance plan and convert it into a comprehensive port- portfolio management plan and so on and so forth it should be aligned to their portfolio governance uh, everything Uh, all the components which are happening uh, set up the governance correctly right from the beginning for as if the optimal level of rigor and without any more major delays you can achieve the maximum benefit so uh, i think that is self explanatory and i can yeah. move on and see the key aspects here are uh, of the portfolio governance as far as the governance is concerned It, it should help in decision making it should provide us the oversight uh, guidelines it should clarify the roles and responsibilities of various uh, roles which are uh, to be involved in during the portfolio management how the performance measurement should be done what are the parameters for that and what are the regulations what are the compliance requirement so these are the major key factors in your portfolio governance should address all of these in detail we are done with this chapter so uh, we can start off with a couple of questions here are you ready for that yes yeah yes please are you there yes yeah can you hear me yeah actually uh, question vision and mission statement in portfolio management guide is what a technical project execution 
selection and prioritization of projects and program, day-to-day -day operational decision, our individual team role. What is that? What is the importance of vision and mission statement in portfolio management? Pick one out of the four. Is it a technical project execution? Is it selection and prioritization of project and programs? Is it day-to-day -day operational decisions? Is it individual team roles? So B, 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 selection and prioritization. Yes. Okay. That is the correct answer. Why? Vision and mission statement guide the selection and prioritization of the project and programs into the portfolio, ensuring alignment with the organizational broader aspirations and immediate objectives. Good. Two, the vision statement is focused on current projects. A vision statement is a future oriented declaration of the organization's purpose. A vision statement is a detailed plan for project execution. A vision statement is a record of past achievement, which is true. Say B again. B again. Which one? B. B is the correct answer. Because you see, uh, it cannot be focused on the current projects only. No, vision statement is bigger than the projects. Uh, it is record of past achievement. No, that is a uh, that could be called as an organizational process. I said that is not the vision. A detailed plan of project is given. Again, it is not about execution. B is the correct answer. A future oriented declaration of organization purpose. A vision. A vision statement is a future oriented declaration of the organization purpose and aspirations guiding the long term direction. Third question. Strategic goals. In portfolio management are ABCD. First, short term project targets, immediate financial objectives, detailed project plans or long term aims derived from the organization's vision. What do you say? Say D, long term aims. D, you are right, you are right. It is the long term. Strategic goals are long term aims that an organization seeks to achieve stemming from its vision. So now you see that you, you your mind is getting clearer about things. Question number four, objectives in portfolio management. What are they? They are general organizational aspirations. Are there the specific measurable steps to achieve strategic goals? Are they the informal project ideas or broad undefined targets? What do you say? Uh, B. B. B, very good, very good. Objectives are specific measurable steps taken to achieve the broader strategy. Question number five, what is the purpose of portfolio charter? We have deliberated on the portfolio charter quite a bit of detail. So what does it do? What is it? It formally authorizes the portfolio. It is to outline the day-to-day -day management of projects. It is to define technical specifications of the project. It is to record past portfolio achievement. What do you say? A. A. A portfolio charter formally authorizes the portfolio outlining its objective, scope, and alignment with the organizational strategy. Question number five. A portfolio charter typically includes what? It does it include a detailed project plan, titles of each team member, objective, scope, and resource allocation overview, or daily operational activities. What does it include? The portfolio charter. The C. 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 Very good. Very good. A portfolio charter includes objective scope alignment with organizational strategy, resource allocation, and governance structure. So you are having a hang of it now. So I'm I'm not saying the questions just I offered you. They were of uh, some 
uh, exam quality questions, but at least they were checking your concepts if you are rightly grasping onto them. And I am happy that you have answered all the questions correctly. So before we can close this session, uh, can you make your comments on these three questions? Uh, definitely one point that stood out would be the only in this chapter. The life cycle um, phases that that was mm -hmm. definitely new information to me that I gotta I gotta get alignment with. Um, yeah, um, the next point that stood out. It's really all the components. I mean, I guess it's a different same way of saying the different things is not only so after after understanding what that is really trying mm -hmm. to figure out, you know, which components are in each that, that, that's that's definitely the thing that stood out here. Um, what's the one that's still puzzling? I need to take a deeper dive. Um, I don't know if it's puzzling, but I definitely need to take a deeper dive on the portfolio management. Um, I'm sorry, the uh, monitoring and controlling. I just got to make sure I take a spend some more time on that one um, to, to to understand that one. Um, and then one one idea that it implemented is going to help the team. Um, actually, as I was taking notes, I wrote down um, having a clear mission for a mm -hmm. uh, mission statement for the portfolio. And I wrote programs also. And it was kind of piggybacking off of our discussion from the first session that, you know, mm -hmm. we we have defined programs as like, uh, like like-minded projects that are executed in a certain way. But um, I'm making it a point to not only come up with a, a measurable objective this objective for those so we don't we don't only track metrics of the individual projects we're tracking the business objective in that program but on a portfolio level what i've done is i started to write down scope mm -hmm. but i probably need to do uh vision and that's two different things necessarily I, I need to I need to come up with additional descriptions and, and, and implement vision, not just scope. I mean, scope, scope, what I've done has been, you know, the the the, the arms within our portfolio are, you know, uh, the different divisions, the different groups, and their scope of work is this, but that's not the vision. The vision of the portfolio is at a slightly higher level. It's why they're doing those scopes. So I need to I need to implement better with the vision of the the, the but the vision of the division is. <laughs> no, no, I would say uh, we don't have that kind of vision. We have the vision at the organization level, right? Yes, of course, I do agree that uh, there might be uh, visions at the departmental level or the portfolio level. People may have that. But here, what we are talking about, the vision of the organization, vision, mission, and strategy of the organization. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The big picture. Yeah, I need to focus more on that. Um, you know, we I, I kind of drive why we're doing what we're doing. But that I got to go a step higher and say what the vision of the organization is. I mean, uh -huh. vision organization is what it is. And why we do what we're doing kind of fits into a smaller piece of that. But I got to take a step higher. Than why, why are we here in the first nice. place? <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, that is nice. So we uh, we are done with this one, and uh, naturally the next. Uh, uh, in conclusion, we have got we have covered all of this, right? In a big, huge, huge matter here. Next chapter would be the strategic management portfolio strategic management. That is um, kind of uh, the uh, non uh, the next five six chapters are uh, about. Uh, each one aspect of the portfolio, we will talk about strategic management and other other things. So uh, before we jump into that, if you want to have a little break, I suppose it should be something like 1130 at your time in your time. Uh, it's 1030. Yeah. 1030. OK, so you can have a tea break or something like that. Um, we can have a break of about uh, 15 minutes. Is it so? Yeah, that works.
say okay. 15? So, so do we take the break? You said 15 minutes? 15 minutes. Okay, yeah, we can do that. So after 15 minutes, I'll be back and we will start with the chapter number four, Portfolio Strategic Management. So uh, you can take care till that time, have some fun and we'll be back. Thank you and take care. Thanks.